Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. Help me welcome back Bridget from Hot Flashes and Cool Topics. If you haven't had a chance to listen to my episode on their show, that is linked in the show notes. We were talking about caregiving and Alzheimer's, and I was kind of giving them the 411 on everything Alzheimer's and caregiver. And we started talking about preventions, which there isn't a really great one. And I was really thrilled with our conversation. I thought we covered everything really well. And then I went downstairs and realized there was a big chunk that we didn't talk about. So Bridget is back without Colleen today mm-hmm. on the sh- on my show to talk about the rest of the stuff that we didn't discuss. Right. <laughs> yes. So thanks, Bridget. I'm so glad you could come back today. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks. It's such, it was such an interesting conversation. And, and the um, brain care has been such a big, important part of when you're growing older. And so many people have, this, have issues with brain care. I, I, my mother, in the last year of her life, uh, got d- dementia. So that it took about 10 months and it was just a really big turn for her. So I, of course, am very interested if there is anything that people can do to help prevent it. Also, just what, uh, you know, any other tips to t- help take mm-hmm. care of a loved one that is suffering from this. So, yeah. Well, for- unfortunately, with the COVID, you know, the shut shutdown, lock in, whatever we want to call it, the shelter in place has not done any of us any favors Mm -hmm. because even if you're an introvert, you need socialization. And I think it's the stimulation that's important. I know um, I'm pretty happy with doing my own thing. That's why I'm an independent contractor type person. I don't play well with others generally. (laughs) And um, there are just days when I just, I feel just wickedly grouchy, grouchy. Mm-hmm. And I realize, oh, you know, probably should go out with our cycle club. Mm-hmm. And there are people in our group that I don't agree with on a lot of things. I've got some people that think this whole thing's a hoax and that there's only been 10,000 COVID deaths. And so I just have to smile and say, okay, sure, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I actually told my husband this morning, I'm like, you know, I actually enjoy riding with you more than the group. But it's still important to get out there and just be with other people, even though while we're riding bikes, it's not like we're having big conversations. Right. So right. Something about just being with other people just is very beneficial. So absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm fortunate that I still get to play with my tennis team. And you know, we can't because that's a sport where we don't necessarily have to be right next to each other. There's a few close calls when you're with your doubles partner <laughs> when you're almost running into them and you have to really shout it out. But luckily I could do that. But I think you're right. You have to be um there's some stimulation that goes on when you interact with other people uh, that your brain, I don't know a lot about the brain, but it just seems like it's probably lighting up everywhere. And it's interesting. One thing I noticed with my mother, um, she was pretty sharp for, you know, most of her life. My father had passed away 17 years before she did. And, you know, she was just going right along. She used to do the jumble puzzle every day in the newspaper. She loved it. She'd been doing that since I was a little kid. And all of a sudden her eyesight got really bad. And it seems like she wasn't able to do that anymore. She wasn't able to read the newspaper. And that is a a time that I just noticed, or maybe I want to notice that things started really going downhill. So I, I don't, you know, you always hear crossword puzzles, do these crossword puzzles. They're supposed to help you and help your brain think. But that was something I thought, she's not doing those anymore. She's not reading her newspaper anymore. And, you know, I don't know if that had something to do with her eyesight and that just led to other things. I I just am not sure. What was probably the case is that it wasn't necessarily her vision that was the problem. It was the processing. Okay. Because Mm -hmm. there were like, it was so frustrating with my mom because she had dogs all her life. She loved dogs. Most of my listeners know I've got three golden retrievers. 
I need. I don't need to say how cute they are. Golden retrievers <laughs> equals I, cute. I grew up with golden retrievers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would try to show her a cute video or photo of one of the dogs on my phone, and you know, even well, I had the iPhone seven. I had the smaller version mm-hmm. until earlier in 2020, and I would show her. And she would just like literally. I mean, it was like. It was like if I showed you something written in a foreign language. You might okay. look at it and, and kind of smile and nod at me, but it would be obvious that you would be like, what am I looking at? Okay. But when you said she was doing the jumble, mm-hmm. I laugh one because I am the worst at crossword puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that, that actually was a great segue, so I appreciate that, into how dynamic learning is really important all the time, but as we age... You know, we hear about people getting in a rut and, you know, we, we get into our comfort zone of things that work. We have routines and, and we don't like it when those routines get all messed up like this year. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? <sighs> you know, yeah. We all had to bring out every coping technique and then search for more this year. Mm-hmm. And so yes. you can imagine what it's like if you've got a broken brain. Oh yeah. It's really yeah. challenging. But mm-hmm. dynamic learning is anything that is actually challenging to learn so like if i actually said okay you know jen you need to like you need to get really good at the sudoku i'm like terrible at math i can't do the sudoku Mm -hmm. to save my soul but if i worked at it that would be really really good for my brain because it's just it's it's like you know we can take a walk and it's better than sitting on our buns but you know taking a jog is better physically well maybe i don't I don't jog. I like to ride bikes better on the <laughs> yeah. joints, you know, but uh-huh. the physical activity is like, I don't jog. So if I run two or three houses down the street, just for the hell of it, because why not? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's your muscles are like, Whoa, what are we doing? So your brain's doing the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, just like physical exercise helps keep your body healthy. Anything that's challenging your mind mentally, learning a new language, learning new dance steps, you know, it doesn't have to be jogging or some atrocious thing. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. All help keep your brain healthy. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about that. You know, I've read it a lot and I thought, well, how do I, you know, like articulate that in a slightly different way? Because, you know, we hear it and we're like, yeah, 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 I know. But how do you want to articulate it so that people like understand what it, you know, like, how do you get your brain to do a push up kind of deal? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it doesn't have to be Sudoku or crosswords or a foreign language, you know, dancing, you know, it's just, I would say try to just learn something new or do yeah. you think even following a new recipe. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of ways that you know, following just something new or putting something together is always a challenge for me. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Following the directions on something, you know, then you have this feeling of accomplishment or frustration when it doesn't fit together. But, you know, I, I, I think that could be very helpful. And, you know, I'm a former elementary school teacher, so there was definitely things that we would do with the young brain. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of older people, but we were doing, we would do things like definitely crossing the midline was very important. So we would do like kids that were having issues with learning their letter sounds. We would do things to where they would do their letter sounds for the letter and punch their arms like in a cross. So they were crossing the midline and, that was a big thing with dyslexia. I know that when we were trying to teach them to write, if they were, it wasn't so much if they were writing something backwards or making their letters backwards. It was almost as if they started in the middle of the page and they were all over the place. So that was a big thing going left to right. So that always piqued my interest in how the brain would work and how we could train the brain. But I was always with younger kids. So I wasn't with the other end of the of the age groups. So, you know, I always wondered, I always was trying to do little things like that with my mother, but you know, it, it, it doesn't always work when they're a fully formed adult. <laughs> it's, it's easier with a child. Mm-hmm. That is true. Well, we get into our routines, our ruts, you know, the, another positive of the pandemic is for two, three years, I was saying, you know, I know I need to change up my workout routine at the gym. Um, I'm doing the same class Tuesday, 
Thursday, Saturday, the same stuff Wednesday, Friday. I mean, literally, you could almost set a timer and be, you know, your body's like, oh, must be 930. We're doing X today. Oh, must be 10 o'clock. We're doing X. Mm -hmm. And while that's not bad for you, it's not, it's, it's like maintenance. So mm -hmm. you're not, you're not losing weight or making new muscles or toning your body better. You're just keeping it from getting worse, which, okay, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Well, my gym has been closed since the middle of March. This is September 29th. So it's been closed mm -hmm. for six and a half months. Mm -hmm. And we have gotten into cycling. My husband finally, got, I've, I had to get back into it because of weather and life, which I don't, normally I would go to the gym and do spin. Mm -hmm. but which is pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. And now it's like my options are work out at home, ride my bike outside, which for a couple weeks, no, actually a month, we had so much smoke. We really couldn't go outside. Yeah. Like, yay yeah. for 2020. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. What else? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Just not fun. I mean, the air was so brown. It was just nasty. I have so, a, yeah. I have a brother-in-law in, -law in uh, San Francisco or and my son's in Los Angeles and he was, you know, just when it got really those hot, hot days, like 110 or what, 115 degrees. And then, it, then you go out and the sky's orange, but my, my brother-in-law, it was orange. He's like, yeah. It is yeah we, we were going to go to San Francisco for our anniversary, which is September 9th. It mm -hmm. was like, well, you know, we can't, we haven't gone on any of our vacations. We were going yeah. to go to, um, it's like a, safari park up in northern california slightly north of the wine country mm -hmm. and between the it, first i was like okay it's it's serious glamping yeah which i'm only i'm like i could probably tolerate it for a night i don't know how many nights i want to do it <laughs> but it just about the point time we we're like about to hit you know pay on the online booking it's when all these fires started and it yeah. was like, eh, probably not a good idea. And so on our anniversary, it's like, okay, let's just, let's just go over to the city. We wanted to shop at Ikea for something that you can't order online. And then we'll have a nice dinner. We'll get out of the smoke and we'll come home. And I opened my phone to Instagram or something. And I was like, uh, I don't think we're going to see anywhere. Tonight. <laughs> I know, I know. But, you know, to your point, the exercise, getting out of the routine you know, mixing it up a little is supposed to be so good for you. And I know I'll try to incorporate those uh, high intensity in interval training type things Blech. that wear <laughs> me out. Like, it's funny, we got a Peloton during this pandemic and I, my husband loves it. Oh, ours is on order. <laughs> oh, it took forever. It took forever for it to come in. And uh, he loves it. I ride it when I can't go play tennis. Um, or I can't do something else, then I'm like, okay, I'll ride the Peloton and I'll do, try to do some hit training there. And I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> but it is something different. And I know how that can be good for you. And I can see how that can help also with brain work, you know, cause I, I mean, you're working a different muscle and just hitting different areas. Um, we're so also can, getting more oxygenated blood yeah. to your brain, which mm -hmm. If you know anything about vascular dementia, which generally happens with a stroke. That's really what happened with my mother. She yeah. had a stroke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So their brain is deprived of oxygen temporarily, obviously not, not permanently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my maternal grandmother had a brain aneurysm for three months before they went, oh, you're not suffering from migraines. A woman who never had headaches oh, her entire goodness. life. I don't know how she managed to get through life without having oh my, headaches. Oh my. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. So wow. three months. So wherever the blood touches the brain gets damaged. They told my grandfather, yeah, she only has about a 5% chance of surviving the surgery. I guess they forgot to factor in the honoriness. Oh, she, she was determined. <laughs> yeah. She was totally determined. Yeah. And, but they didn't discuss what might happen if she did survive. I guess they just, didn't think about it because like 5% is not exactly a, you know, mm -hmm. a, a really a positive number. And she did. And she seemed pretty normal afterwards, but she went downhill just like somebody with Alzheimer's to the point where she was nonverbal, couldn't walk, couldn't feed herself, all that lovely stuff that happens at the mm -hmm. end of Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've experienced it with tennis. I do get this cycling and sometimes 
exercising, although we do a different class. The Orange Theory has a, a daily workout. And mm-hmm. so the exercises are the similar, but they're all in different orders and different, you know, one day we might be upper body and stuff. So I have to think a little, lot more. So I'm exercising my brain and my body at the same time. But sometimes when I'm cycling, I get so many creative, creative ideas. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I need to go home and write down all these ideas for like videos to promote the podcast or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there was one day I actually had to just say, okay, brain, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> must have been really clear, fresh air, right temperature. Because, and I was by myself. So my brain literally was like popcorn ideas just popping mm-hmm. in my head. Mm-hmm. So I finally said, okay, I'll fix you. And then I just rode as hard and fast as I could <laughs> so that, you know, you're heavy breathing so that there is less oxygen going to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But mean, we were talking about routines and, you know, as we get older and we've got kids and jobs and households to run, I mean, you have to have a routine mm-hmm. and for whatever reason, and nobody has been able to explain to me why most humans don't like change. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And I'd, I'd know that just from working with children, especially children on the autism spectrum, routine is extremely important. Uh, disrupting their routine uh, can really get them out of sorts. And you try so hard to stick to a routine. And in a school, you can do it, but things happen in a school. Fire drills happen. Uh, weather, tornado drills happen, you know, um, we don't have those here. <laughs> you don't have tornado. No, we had them no. in Kentucky. We had them in Kentucky. We have them in Tennessee. But, you know, disruptions happen. Things, you know, assemblies. Assemblies were always a big deal. Like you almost had to uh, isolate those children. Uh, if it was going to be too much, some, it was fine. It wasn't going to mess them up. Or you had to really prepare them. Uh, but change is extremely hard for them. A substitute teacher will, and it's mm-hmm. not the substitute's fault, but it is just you know, can really drive some of those children just that they just can't handle that. So I'm curious, I think that is a big thing, but I just am curious if there's any correlation between that routine and as a person gets older, um, if that is something that is also an issue. I think what happens as we get older, we get into a routine, you know, and if... (laughs) At almost 54, it's hard to, it's hard to envision retirement. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But you know, when that's the other thing is we always need a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've raised your children, you've retired from your career. Okay. Now Mm -hmm. what? You know, which I think a lot of people might be suffering from because, you know, they've had to go from commuting to an office to working from home. I know there's some people are trying to juggle work and getting the children taught online and ugh, no thank you <laughs> so <know>. glad oh. <laughs> yeah so glad it's like me and my husband the three dogs the daughter is down the street uh-huh. with her i call him the almost son-in-law uh-huh. and you know everybody's fine you know she finally went back to work after four months mm. and it's all you know it we were relatively unscathed we were talking earlier about people that are that are having problems in their relationships. And my husband's like, well, I don't know what we did right. And I'm like, we have a lot less stress than other people, which mm-hmm. I don't remember if we talked about that on your, your show. Mm-hmm. But stress is a toxin to the brain. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because I, until this year, thankfully right before my mom, well, when she fell and broke her leg, I did an episode with a guy in Southern California on mindfulness. And, you know, I know I'm from Northern California, but I am not a woohoo mindfulness <laughs> meditate. I cannot meditate because I cannot shut my brain off. Uh-huh. You know, I listen to people talk. I listen to music or podcasts almost constantly. It's almost bizarre if you come mm-hmm. in my office and it's like, it's quiet in here. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, it's like really weird. Uh-huh. And it's just because all of a sudden there's just like, I don't know, I have like conversations going on in my head. So I'd rather listen to other people's than my own. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. We talked to someone actually today. I did an interview. I'm not sure when it'll go up. It'll be a while. But about mindfulness and, you know, even though, like you said, uh, meditating, it's very hard to get into it. I've been, I've been trying to do it. Uh, I'm doing the shortest amount I can, you know, um, doing one of the apps. But the grounding techniques 
seemed helpful because those don't take as much time. Uh, and she was talking about the uh, breathing, the four corners of my cat is jumping all over me there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the four corners of breathing. And so those are some, like you'll take a breath all the way, count to four to go up to this corner, hold it for four seconds, breathe out four seconds, then take a breath all the way down here, hold it breathe it out. And those are little grounding techniques. There were some other ones as well, but it is, you know, when you feel, when you're, you feel that toxin and that stress, and I guess the cortisol's releasing in your body and everything, and just even trying to do one of those exercises can be helpful for just a minute. It's probably getting oxygen to your, to your brain as well when you're doing those breathing exercises, but trying to get an older person to do that <laughs> might be a little difficult. Uh, True. He yeah. had posted, he, I met him because he posts videos and I'd started watching his videos and I was like, Oh, this is very interesting. His, um, his episode was something about mindfulness and it came out in like March or April. His name mm -hmm. is Scott Lavitt. Really cool. And I watched a brief video of his actually this morning, probably because everything that's going on lately is just, it's like, I feel like just pulling the pillow over my head and hoping that 2021 is better. <laughs> it's just getting more stressful. Yeah. Yes. It, I just, yeah, it really is. <laughs> well, his, his, he moved back home with his parents and he's helping his mom take care of his dad who has Alzheimer's and his dad is declining and everybody's declining faster because of this, this charming year we're having. Mm -hmm. And he said in the video that his dad is started, his dad was always a positive, happy person, which I was not, I had to work on not being negative all the time. Mm -hmm. And lately I'm finding that, that I need some retraining. So I, I think maybe <laughs> that's why I listened to his video, but he was, he tells his dad, you know, you need to wake up happy you know, be thankful that you're alive. And I'm thinking, well, he's got Alzheimer's. So that's kind of pushing it. Yeah. Yeah. So this morning we're walking the dogs and some person, okay. I have always driven small cars. The biggest car I've ever had is the one I have now. It's a Honda Accord. So mm -hmm. big is like, for me, it's big, but it's not that big. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this guy comes in this giant truck that's lifted and it's noisy. And my, you know, I instantly tense up. It's like, Oh, why do you have to have a stupid truck like that? With his Confederate flag on it. Okay, oh, no. Northern California. Are you <laughs> sure you weren't in, in Tennessee? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, it's uh, just, you know, it is, and his uh, license plate says redneck. So I don't know. Maybe uh, he's a transplant. I don't know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> and, you know, so immediately I'm irritated. It's like, Arr! and I'm wait, wait, okay. And I'm like, I took a deep breath in and I said, oh, you know, I'm very lucky to be alive today. Take another mm -hmm. deep breath in and exhale and go. And I'm so blessed that I get to walk these lovely dogs in this, you know, pleasant morning air today. And then he mm -hmm. made a U-turn. So I had to like repeat the, <laughs> the whole mantra. Again. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. now I have to like, I'm lucky I can hear this. In this yeah. Room. I've got and the hearing like, capability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's interesting. Uh, the energy that uh, we talked with this person today and it's so fresh in my mind because we talked to her this morning about the energy and that. Um, our talk was really more about when our kids were young and older and dealing with your children, but the energy you give off and receive. Um, and I didn't think about it when I was younger, but it's something I have to be mindful of because if I start to get their frustration gets to me and I get frustrated and I do believe me, <laughs> um, <laughs> things going on, you know, in the neighborhood, we live in Tennessee and, you know, it's, it's very tough to have, uh, there's a small group that we have to stick together that we're not like a lot of the other people around here. And, um, it's, I think I catch the drift. <laughs> catch it, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's like, we have to, you know, we kind of just can vent to each other, but sometimes I have to even step away from that because I get down reading too much negativity and, and my husband's so funny because he's like, you can't let that get to you, you know, and I'll see something and I'll say, I'm sorry, that just makes me so mad. Why do they follow that person? They've got to be stupid to yeah. follow that person. And he's like, you're, are you going to let that person get to you? And then I'm like, well, it's just affecting everybody, <laughs> you know, so I get upset with him, but it is something with the energy and I have to be aware of this, ground myself, take, take my time and just say, okay. 
I've got to just breathe through this and, but, but I can tell exactly how that works. So it is interesting. I'm trying to train my brain too. And I hope that it's, uh, <laughs> I hope that it will carry over as I age, you know, these things, I think maybe, I don't know if how, you know, when a lot of the study has come about, perhaps people that are older uh, than us didn't have these techniques yet. Although meditation has been around for a long time. Uh, maybe it just wasn't quite in the Western world as, big as it was. Yeah. So I, I think that's kind of a interesting thing to think about. Cause I, you know, of course we would do anything we could to help our loved ones uh, that are having a memory loss or that need a memory care. We do whatever we could to help. But another interesting uh, guest that we have coming up um, founded a company where she hired a comedian to come in and work with her mom. I don't know if you've heard of that or not. That's not, um, oh, <laughs> hysteria for charity or hilarity for charity. Oh, it's, it's not, but it's okay. similar. And so um, it, it was really interesting too, uh, how she was going through this and just noticed her mother was like withdrawing when she, she researched and found the best memory care facility for her. And, but she would notice her mother was just not interacting at all. And she uh, worked in comedy herself and hired a comedian that and she actually found, she said it was far out there, but I don't, I can't remember. I think, I don't, she put it on Craigslist or Twitter and said, is there any comedians that would like to work with geriatric patients? And somebody answered her and came by and she of course trained them talked to them first and now they have this whole thing going and um right now in covid they can't go to the the care facilities so they do a lot of online things they do a lot of zoom things in that manner but i thought that was she said it was amazing the reaction that her mother had to this person like her mom was from brooklyn and used a this lady was from New York and came in and just kind of started talking to her like she was somebody from, you know, like she was somebody from New York and, and the woman started reacting and started uh, responding to her. So I thought that was really amazing. And it's amazing. It just popped into her head like that, you know, like I wish I could. Yeah. That's really interesting because, well, we know like laughter makes us feel better. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, It releases the, you know, the happy hormones, which, Mm -hmm. i'm gonna get it wrong if i i'm trying to think of what they are endorphins that sounds right so i'm thinking dopamine but i think that's wrong so (laughs) yeah i think it's endorphins but it could be dopamine because like i know they dump that i don't know i don't know all my body stuff real well (laughs) yeah but what's interesting i just did an episode it was on september 22nd called make grandma smile Mm -hmm. and it's a gentleman who is also an entertainer who does senior engagement activities and he is very good at personalizing them to the group. Mm. And one of the things that I always noticed at my mom's memory care residence was they play like a lot of big band music. And I'm like, my mom graduated from high school in 1960. So I think big (laughs) band is the wrong era. Yeah. But it was always on in the background and maybe it was good for other residents. I know I had a couple weeks ago, I swear, you know, it's like the news. (laughs) just washed over me like the biggest negative wave and i have a weekend routine i listen to a a, it's a political podcast that's also funny Mm -hmm. and after i listened to that one i still felt like murdering people and my husband's (laughs) the closest one to the you know he's the closest one at hand so it's probably not he stayed away Yeah. yeah he's like well he's telling me you know he's being a typical guy trying to like fix things with his suggestions and it's like i just needed to let it roll through but i'm like i need it to roll through real quickly because this i feel crappy and -hmm. i don't want to feel crappy and so i've talked to numbers of people about how music brings out people with alzheimer's like people in the very later stages that are non-verbal non you know they don't look at you they're just like kind of in their shell like a little pearl and I, I like, I love music, but after a while I get bored, you, you know, it's mm-hmm. like if I listen to stuff from the eighties, from like when I was in high school, or if I'll put on like the top, you know, like the pop station, like some of it's like, Oh, I really like this song. The next one is like, no, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And I, I find I'm editing. 
Well, I found a radio show. It's kind of like old school, kind of a cross between a podcast and radio radio with Huey Lewis from Huey Lewis in the oh, News yeah. Yeah. doing 80s. Well, okay, oh. I'm an 80s kid. I graduated from high school in 84. And mm -hmm. so I thought, okay, let me give it a listen. You know, didn't like every song in the 80s. But what's cool is between every third or so song, he's talking about, oh, yeah, well, this is, you know, I'm trying to remember which band he was talking about, like, um, I think it was the Jay Giles band is actually uh -huh. an inspiration for them. I'm like, oh, oh wow. I never knew that. Yeah. And so, yeah. and there was, what was it? Oh, there was a singer that sang, they were at, she was at their concert. She was, you know, side stage singing and she has such a powerful voice that he could hear her over his own, you know, amplified oh, wow. band. Wow. Uh -huh. So it's like a really, you know, so it's kind of like it, it hits both things, but I literally went from murderous to <laughs> just like, yeah, I'm done with this world or at least this chunk of it uh -huh. to feeling a lot better. And I'm like, yes. okay, yes. so music is really good. So that's, you know, we, we've talked about some ways to like reduce our stress and our frustrations. And I was going to mention to you, cause you noticed it with kids and it, did you ever notice that if you were stressed or tired or frustrated with your mom, that sh you had like a less pleasant time with her? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, oh yeah. And I mean, she, bless her. It's so funny for me because I'm one of 12 kids. I'm one of the younger ones. I'm number 11. Oh, so I, I would go over and she was nicer to me than she was to my older sister. And my older sister, it was funny. Um, my older sister was her caretaker. My older sister was a nurse and was divorced. And she moved into mom's house when mom was really sick. And I, re I may have told you this, but I talked to you when you were on our podcast that she, if she knew who I was when I walked in the door, but then if she took a nap and she woke up from that nap, she wouldn't know who I was. And she said to me, she woke up and said, well, so do you have any brothers or sisters? Oh, Lord. <laughs> and um, I was like, well, yes, uh, I have, I have 11 and you had us all. And, and then she, my sister came home and she said, well, did you know that she is an only child? <laughs> she pointed to me <laughs> and um, my, my sister was like, no, she's your little girl. She, you know, but it, it is funny how she was very much nicer to me than she was to my sister. And, and, and I wonder I don't know why, if she remembered me as a child or she, when she remembered me and she remembered her because my sister was 17 when I was born as that angst teenager, you know, that person that gave her a lot of angst and doesn't remember that with me, you know, even though I went through it too. But it, it was very interesting um, how that all worked. But with, with the children, uh, in, in my class, I know that if I were anxious about something, it definitely would reflect on my classroom. If like they said, okay, these test scores need to be higher and we need to blah, blah, blah. And then I would get all like, oh gosh, if their test scores don't get higher, then I'm in trouble. And then they would get so frustrated. There were little kids and they're like, oh, this pressure on getting my test score up, you know, tears. And you don't want that for little kids. And anyway, I, it's that whole energy again, the back and forth. But it's interesting too, with music is another thing in the classroom. Um, if we were doing silent reading or reading with groups, or if they had time for writing, uh, we would put on almost classical music, but not Beethoven, because that's too darn <laughs> But it would be like more, more light Mozart type music. Put that on any music without lyrics. Now, when we were having fun and doing little body movement, ex what did they call it? We had to call it gross motor skills. <laughs> When we did that, we would put on fun songs to dance to and with lyrics, but, but, you know, the music part, something about that, uh, playing in the background is so nice. Um, well, it lights up more parts of your brain. Mm -hmm. That much I know. I've read in the recent past that if you are reading like something you want to study or remember, Mm -hmm. I'm the person that reads a novel and like, oh, that was good. Next. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, like my friends were asking us, oh, have you seen such and such movie? No, I haven't seen them. Oh, it was about 12, 15 years ago. They start talking about it. I'm like, wait, that sounds familiar. And then mm -hmm. they, they discuss it a little more. I'm like, I think I may have seen that one, but you know, like, why do yes. I need to remember the details of a movie? It's like, you know, yeah. not going on a game show, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But if you put 
classical music on quietly in the background, allegedly it helps you retain the information that you're reading better. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm editing anything with writing, I like to play the nature sounds mm -hmm. in the background. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because on Spotify, they have one that I really like, but I can't get it turned down enough. Like one, one little tick on uh -huh. the volume is too loud. So I, I, I like the one from Apple and it's like, I don't know, super long and it's nature sound. So it's not like it goes back to the, you know, to the beginning again, it's a big deal. But, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of sometimes think I should just like pump that through the house. Although, you know, this is a, temp <laughs> this is a temporary residence. Uh -huh. Most of my listeners know we moved at the beginning of the year. My husband's in real estate. And being self-employed and having a very expensive house was becoming a stressful situation we thought we should just fix. Mm -hmm. And we bought that house in 07. We all know what happened in 08, 09. And he was, you know, having been in the real estate business 16 years, decided, you know, we're back at, you know, a certain amount of equity. We were in a golf course neighborhood. They had closed the golf course a little over a year ago. And it was winter when we get rain here in California. So the grass was green. It looked good. Mm -hmm. We drive over there to see our friends. It just, it's atrocious. Mm -hmm. And when we sold our house in January, 2020, that was the last highest sale in that neighborhood. Oh, wow. So we definitely wow. made a good choice. And then yeah. the world went to hell. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Except for divorce, we've hit like all of the all top of the five stressors this year. <laughs> wow. And then I a mean, few that weren't on the list. <laughs> right, right. I mean, we've had, yeah, and, and all that thing can just compound. We'd have, we've had not in our immediate family, but siblings and my husband's mother, we've had health uh, scares this year. So Ugh. not with COVID, but other health scares. We're like, okay, you know, it, when you're going through it, it's almost like you are in, um, Oh gosh, it's like you're in just a work mode. Like to me, it's almost like I don't deal with that stuff till it's over with. And while I'm in it, I'm like, okay, we've got to get through this. And then when it's over and things are back, then I feel like everything in me comes out. Like um, that's when my emotions start to come out. And I, I guess, cause I haven't dealt with it. So, <laughs> which is another, you know, thing, an interesting way that people do things. And I didn't realize I did that until recently um, that I deal with those things. But, you know, it, it is interesting, just the whole method of dealing with somebody with a memory loss. And, uh, you, know, it, you know, you always hear these things. I can remember when I was in college hearing aluminum cans. Don't be drinking out of aluminum can and cans. Yeah. Did you ever hear that one? And well, mine was um, aluminum cookware. And I'm like, how do I know if it's aluminum or not? I, I, I can remember the club cookware because my father sold it at his, his, at his appliance store. Then all of a sudden he was trying to get rid of it. And I think I have one piece of it left, like a big stock pot. But oh yeah, like, oh, you, ha you can't have the aluminum cookware. You can't have, don't drink out of aluminum cans. Aluminum was a big thing, you know, and now I haven't heard so much about that being a thing. So it, it's hard to say what is uh, helpful. I do remember listening to one of your podcasts. Um, I think it was one on nutrition and the lady was talking about eggs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And about, um, but I think how many, I forgot how many eggs it was. It was a lot. It like was a lot a, of eggs. She was, dozen or some, yes, she was taking care of somebody with ALS. Okay. Which okay. I think actually is probably worse than Alzheimer's. I think it's because your brain is there and you know what's happening. Yeah. It's hard to say. It's hard to say what would be worse. Yeah. But, well, and it strikes people at a younger age than generally mm -hmm. Alzheimer's does. But yeah, she took that woman off of all kinds of food and she was doing using food as medicine. And, and I've read things where like something I read recently, somebody's like, I hate that term because food is not medicine. Food is how you nourish your body, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, we're, we're splitting hairs here. Yeah, yeah. Because my mom literally drank two liters of caffeine-free Diet Coke, like okay. my entire life. Okay. She'd have like four ounces of juice in the morning, in the warm months, which I'm in California, so that's half the year, mm -hmm. and then Diet Coke, like all the time. And mm -hmm. it's like years ago, somebody said, oh, you know, they think the phosphorus or the bubbles 
in the sodas is and the increase in consumption of sodas is causing cancers and stuff and when you look you know we've got more cancers more autism more all more all of this ugly stuff mm -hmm. and the, there's a big question as to why right and right. we were there was something you said that triggered a thought mm -hmm. my grandmother is as of yesterday 102 and a half oh my gosh yes yeah. and i'm like the only one like I, I probably, well, I think I do kind of sort of count the quarter birthdays for her now. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's yeah. like, we definitely get to the half birthday. So I like made a mental note and I did spend time with her yesterday, but not because it was Monday, not because it was her half birthday. Mm -hmm. My dad was her oldest son and he died at seven, almost 78. My mom died just after turning 77. And so I'm like, okay, my grandmother has glaucoma. She's had glaucoma most of my life i was 12 when she mm -hmm. came down with this so what is that 42 years ish and like i said can't do math so <laughs> <laughs> i think, I think that was right I think um and then so in 2005 she fell and damaged the retina in her good eye so she's been mostly blind for the last 15 years and then mid 2019 she became really hard of hearing and there's two things that I've learned from her. Well, one, I'm like, it's, it baffles my brain. I'm like, okay, why'd my parents draw the short end of the straw? You know, why did they draw the short mm -hmm. stick? Not that mm -hmm. I want her to go or anything. Mm -hmm. um, Cause she can, we actually were discussing politics and legalized marijuana yesterday. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, my, um, there's one good thing. It's like, I, I control what she listens to because, because she's blind, she can't, work mm -hmm. like a regular player so i got her the alzheimer's radio player it's basically a giant memory stick with a giant on off button okay mm -hmm. um so it's super easy to use if you can't see you know it's designed for people whose brains don't work so i kind of figured it would work for her but she was telling me she listened to rush limbaugh and i was like oh we're, oh, not, put no. we're not putting <laughs> that poison in your brain like <laughs> we're not going there so our political conversation was not um you know, I was very careful because, you know, I'm not changing her mind at 102. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's originally from Sioux City, Iowa. So mm -hmm. she has a little bit, uh, she's not the diehard blue Californian like the rest of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know how we got on the legalized marijuana, but we did. And, uh -huh. you know, it's like, it was very interesting that she wasn't against the idea but she was mm -hmm. like you know we're not gonna smoke it i didn't just, i didn't go into edibles and all that stuff with her. <laughs> maybe like, for the glaucoma i don't know <laughs> that's true actually when yeah. i was in college i there was a like a well and i was like 16 when i started college and he was in his 30s so this guy was like double my age so he was old compared to me yeah <laughs> but mm -hmm. he was totally blind from glaucoma and he was he was an interesting person to get to know but because both my parents are gone and my grandmother is still with me, I've started investigating aging because I'm just, a lot of the people in my support group have had horrific times at the end with their loved ones, denial about dying, just not accepting it. Just they, they've gone the hard way and it's frustrating mm -hmm. me. So I'm trying to craft an episode in my, well, I'm trying to craft an episode right now. It's all in my head on like, here's dying. <laughs> But yeah. not in a bummer kind of way, because right. you know, even though it's an Alzheimer's caregiver support podcast, we still try to have fun. Yeah. That's, that's a really heavy topic, but it, it's, it is. It's we, starting we do, to come yeah. together. We but, talked to a, a woman, yeah, that um, sh hers was more like she herself isn't a death doula. And we may have talked to you about this. No, but um, I've thought about, I've, I think I follow a couple on yeah. LinkedIn and I think okay. I need to talk to them. It was very interesting just because I never had known that these things were an option. She acted as a death doula for her brother and her mother, but she herself is not one. Her name's Becky Odd Jensen. And it, she's right now in New Zealand, I believe, but we just talked to her over Zoom and I, you know, just options out there, you know, I, and there's another lady and I can't remember her name, but she is in our group, um, our Facebook group and talked about just different options that are out there. Uh, just, you know, end of life options. So that's, that is really interesting too. Well, one of the things that got me curious is it's like, okay, well, one, like, you know, like my dad had diabetes and then a bunch of other chronic problems. My mom was very healthy except for the Alzheimer's. So it's like, okay, so what gives? 
Mm-hmm. And then why did mom fall, break her leg and die in two and a half weeks? We always hear how, oh, you know, Aunt Becky was totally healthy, hiking the Himalayas or whatever, and she mm-hmm. fell and broke her hip and died. And like, what? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. essentially, we're like a very complex mechanical components. Mm-hmm. And our body can repair a lot of stuff, but after a while, enough things break where the whole system just falls apart. Part. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much aging in a really brief nutshell. Mm-hmm. Back to my 102 year old grandmother, who is a very visual person mm-hmm. who has not been able to see worth beans for 15 years. Mm-hmm. When she fell and damaged the good eye, I thought, well, that's, that's it. it. You know, she's, she's going to do what her mother did. My great grandmother in 1978 had a pacemaker put in. And I don't think that this is still the case, but she could feel it under mm-hmm. the skin. And this was a woman who was the oldest of 14. They traveled across the country in a covered wagon. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. She was, I was like nine when, when she was, cause she died when I was 12 mm-hmm. and she was telling me these stories. And of course, you know, at nine and little house on the prairie was, yeah, super was popular. About, I was so I was like, that. you know, the TV <laughs> version was way more interesting than great grandma version. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't learn to appreciate it when I, mm-hmm. when I could have appreciated it. But no, you know, 15 years later, she's still here. And her husband, my grandfather, died in 1997. It'll be, uh, what is that, 23 years in December. That's that's when my dad died. Yeah. 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 So it's like, that's a long time to live without your spouse. Yes. And then, you know, now she's lost. She should have been living in assisted living many, many years ago, Mm -hmm. but she was resistant. We talk about that a lot on my podcast about, you know, 70% of us are going to need care Mm -hmm. before we die. Mm -hmm. So accept it accept that yeah. now and then maybe you won't be a pain in the rump when you need it right i know and I, th- I think the other 30 percent just die like poof you know they like something like my grandfather had a massive stroke fell over and was mm-hmm. gone mm-hmm. You know, so he didn't need care because it was yeah. all over all at once mm-hmm. but it just blows my mind when i found out she was in a board and care home and i went and saw her because i hadn't seen her for several like not months, but many weeks, almost months. And I, and I had just started recording her telling stories. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if this woman dies and I didn't get to see her since mother's day, I am going to be very unhappy that I didn't go see her on Memorial day because I was, you know, I was, I was having a bad time because of my still getting over mom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be really upset with myself. So when my aunt said she's in a board and care home, you could go see her and you know, she needs somebody to help her with everything. Mm -hmm. And she's happy. She's like, these people are so lovely and they take good care of me. She's got like two minor complaints. She's not really loud. Mm -hmm. So if she needs to be escorted to the bathroom and they don't hear her, it's kind of a problem. And she says the food is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which I know what my dad ate. I'm not too sure that's a positive. It's either too Filipino for her or I don't know. I might have to stay (laughs) stay and see what they serve. But uh-huh. my point is, is it's like, it blows my mind that she can just like, well, this is how things are now. I just accept this. And it's like, really? Yeah. Like you can't see. So you can't appreciate all the things that were important to you before. Mm-hmm. And you can barely hear. So you can't really appreciate that. And now you have to have somebody escort you to the, I'm like, Bathroom. okay. And she's still okay. You know, I have a brother that's in a nursing home. He has a mask. And he's only 60. He's going to be 61 soon. And, you know, he had, he was bipolar. Now, now his mind is fine. (laughs) His body doesn't work. So, um, that's not right. (laughs) Yeah, I know it. And I am so surprised that his attitude is as good as it is because now he's so funny with us. There were two boys. So one was a twin to a girl was one of the older ones. He was smack dab in the middle, spoiled rotten oh. <laughs> boy between all these girls, spoiled as could be. And some of my sisters that live near where he is uh, are his main go-to people. But now he hasn't, none of us have been able to physically see him since March. And his first thing was, you mean you're not going to bring me Starbucks? And we're like, we can't bring you Starbucks. <laughs> we're not allowed. And he doesn't quite have the Zoom thing down. He does have his phone. He has an iPad. But for us to try to, like, he will FaceTime us while we're Zooming as a family. One of my siblings like, will hold up the phone <laughs> so he can see us. But it is amazing that his attitude is so good. 
Like, I feel like, oh, my attitude would be terrible. And he didn't realize he had MS. He thought he might have had symptoms and didn't say anything about it for a while. So he was, by the time he was like officially diagnosed, it was really pretty far gone. And he said, you know, if I had known I had it, I probably wouldn't have done the, he did the bike ride across Iowa, the rag, is it rag brand or rag brown race? It's some bike race across um, uh, Iowa. He wouldn't have gone to Amsterdam. He wouldn't have done these things. He said, I'm actually really glad that I didn't know. And he, he never got married. Um, mm. And so he, you know, doesn't really have, you know, children to think about or anything um, worry about. But it is amazing, though, that his attitude's so good. And I'm like, well, I'm glad. It would break my heart if he was as, as, as rough as he was to grow up with and as he picked on us terribly. <laughs> but I would, it would really break my heart if he was sad. And he's not sad. So, ugh. That's something I've got, I'm thankful for. And I don't know where that came from because he did everything, you know, before he, this hitting me would do everything. So, well, maybe that's you know. the point. It's like, he feels like, well, I've been there, done that. So I've done it all. At least I get to see it all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I, that's the thing. It's like, it's one of the things I'm, I'm trying to take away from visiting with her and this, this and crazy 2020 year. Just, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, it's yeah. like, there's days when it's like, you know, literally I'm in California. We're on fire again. Still, you know, there's, mm-hmm. um, there's a winery that burned down. Yes. Like, I saw that. Pretty yeah. sure I have a picture of that. Nope. That's a different winery. Cause uh, we do a charity bike ride for veterans every April, except for this year. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of what's roasting and toasting right now is along the trail that we ride on in Napa and Healdsburg and those places. And there's another ride we generally do in September that burned down. Paradise is on fire again. Two years later, it's like oh, good geez. lord, you know. It's like five million acres is burned. It's like mm-hmm. that's every insane. year. Yeah, every year my son moved there in 2018, and every fall it's like worry, worry, worry. You know, I keep saying, look, if it's so bad, you just get. If you can't get to Tennessee, then go somewhere. And he goes, oh, okay, I'll go to Las Vegas. And I'm like, no. <laughs> That's what I said in the past. I haven't said that this year. It's like, no, you get, you make your way to Tennessee. And I'm like, if you, you know, if you, you know, can't get out in the car, you try to get on a plane. (laughs) Well, I've lived here for 54 years. I do not remember until the last five years ever having this many wildfires. I mean, our wildfire season is now, I think, double the length that it used to be. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it used to be like up in the forest or wherever, but now it affects like, you know, I'm, I'm 45 miles northeast of San Francisco. And, mm-hmm. you know, we had the same horrific air. I mean, the air was so bad. Everybody's like, what's the air quality? We're checking our apps. And the only reason I didn't get really despondent over the horrific number on the app is because we have friends in Oregon and theirs was like double. They were oh, like, I mean, yeah. I think I think just thinking about breathing was toxic for them. It was scary. Yeah. Yeah. So we have days, yeah. you know, where it's like, I don't know if our politics will like implode again or the country will like come, <sighs> come out of this intact or yeah. we'll get out of this virus or fire. Like if it's not one thing, it's three other it's, things. I know. And there's yeah. just days I just think, you know what? I can't, I I'm out here helping family caregivers. There are things I do for my community. I'm just going to sit here and make my little greeting cards that I'm making for friends and family and the residents where my mom lived. And if that just seems like I'm sitting around while Rome burns, well, that's my coping (laughs) technique. Well, yeah, I think something, anything to make anybody else feel better. Like if it's one person, that, that that's good. If you're, you know, you're making one person, that's enough. Cause it is, it gets to that point where like, okay, I'm just going to hold up here for a little bit. Yeah. It's like, I'm going in my little office, which yeah. is a standard track home bedroom with sound panels on the walls that are the fabric on them is my photography. Uh-huh. And so when you walk in here, it's very peaceful. And then generally there's dogs snoring. <laughs> Usually all three dogs are in here. One of them is snoring. Yeah. And I might be listening to a podcast or maybe some music and it's just like, it's just very peaceful. And there's times when it's like the rest of the world could just stay outside these walls. I'm just going to cope with my own self. I know. And it, I feel like that's so important, to, uh-huh. you know, to my physical health, my mental health. And, you mm-hmm. know, one of the things that um, they think like low grade depression can mm-hmm. be 
not a precursor to Alzheimer's, but I, I don't think my mom ever had depression, but I think she had like constant frustrations because my dad was like a crappy eater and he wasn't really, my sister was do it my way, you know, my way or the highway from like before she was born. Oh boy. <laughs> so, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my sister was like, my mom would go into labor, out of labor, into labor. Oh gee. So yeah, my sister has been in charge since like right before she was born. And you know, yeah. I, there are days when I think, you know, come on, sis. It, there's times when it's like, I know my way is right, but we'll do it your way because it's just not worth fighting over. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then sometimes it's like, see, I told you my way was better or, <laughs> no. or oh, okay, their way was fine too. It's like, you know, sometimes you just kind of going to go with the flow, but that is not mm-hmm. her. Uh-huh. And it's yeah. not good. I don't think that's good for your mind. So oh no, that's no. kind of what my mom dealt with. Yeah. And like there were things that she would want to do. And my dad was like, I don't know why you want to do that. So she'd wait till he went out of town or whatever, or, you know, so I just, my whole goal for like brain health, especially right now is just do what I can to improve the world. And Mm -hmm. sometimes if I have to basically like mentally throw the pillow around my head and go, la, 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 (laughs) yeah, that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that is amazing. It'll be very interesting to see the outcome on the other side of this this year of this whole year <sighs> yeah of, our, of the past four years <laughs> it'll yeah. be it'll be very interesting to see what uh studies will prove as far as memory care and brain health and everything i'm i hope that they're positive but i hope there's ways that come about to deal with this but it will be something really interesting to see yeah you know, well on a since we're on that note, and to wrap it up, mm-hmm. the um, superintendents of our, t- we have the, the elementary, middle school, school district, and then the high school district, far as, you know, the schools, both of the superintendents are in my Rotary Club. So mm-hmm. despite the fact that I do not have children at home mm-hmm. or grandchildren or at this point, you know, anybody in the school system, I get updates. And just, I think last week they were saying how they've now discovered like new ways to help kids that are like home, like home. They don't call it home health, but Mm -hmm. I forgot exactly how he referred to it. And it's probably different where you're at, but like the kids that can't attend physically in school. Now Mm -hmm. they have a new tool. That's like, wow, fancy that. They probably had these tools for at least five years. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) yeah. I don't know. I don't know how long video conferencing has been around. Right. Um, You Uh, have to have a fast internet connection, obviously to make it work. But it's yeah. like the whole schooling thing is a disaster. And I've, it's crazy. Yeah. I've had people tell me they think they should just like, well, of course, we got two half years right now, but they like think they should just like basically say, okay, if you were in third grade in March, when we actually go back to in person school, you're going to be in third grade and just like throw out all, this. all those years. <laughs> I, you know, it's so, that's going to be so hard too. I'm so glad I'm not teaching anymore. And I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's like, I see, you know, and I think, you know, we've had all these senior citizens, you know, cloistered away from family and, and other people, which I don't think has been good. So I think they're going to start, I, there's going to be a lot of studies on, wow, this was really horrible for people. So mm-hmm. I think that's a positive. And like, I'm so glad that my grandmother's in a board and care home and I can go mm-hmm. see her mm-hmm. because, you know, 102 and a half, hello, I know. <laughs> every like yesterday, I was every really, day really, is a big deal. Yeah. yeah la- yesterday, I was really, really tired. And I thought, oh, you know, mm. and yeah. the week before was when I was having that really negative tsunami of feelings. Mm-hmm. And I went and talked to her. And I felt so much better after talking after, to her. So yeah. I went yesterday and, we, and it was fine. Like I said, we were talking politics and, and weed. So it's <laughs> so funny. That's like, awesome. that's, yeah, not a, not a conversation I expected to have. And, <laughs> you know, so it's just if we, and like I said, I've always was a pessimistic person. So if we just focus on positives and you know, if there's days that we're just like, I can't deal with the world, just shut it out. Yeah. We have yeah. to do what we need to do to take care of our brains. Cause they're mm-hmm. so precious. That's right. And there's yeah. a lot of healing that they can do to themselves. But once you get to that tipping point of too much damage, mm-hmm. you know, and I think 2020 is just a, toxic Ooh. tsunami of stress it is it is oh my goodness yeah uh, it's like there's just times i just sit back and go i don't think i could have ever 
like contemplated in my worst negative moments no. a year like this. <laughs> that this would really happen. Like you'd see those movies, like the movie Pandemic, like, oh, but that won't ever happen. I'm like, okay, it did, you know. Now you hear the yeah. you hear the comedians say or the Hollywood people say, you know, if somebody brought me this script, I'd laugh at him and say, this is so preposterous that this nobody would believe it. It's like, unfortunately, we're living. It's it. true. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, if you haven't mm -hmm. started your, your pandemic, you know, learning how to, a foreign language, which my husband keeps <laughs> threatening to do, or, or maintaining sourdough starter. <laughs> yes. Some dynamic learning, uh -huh. mindfulness, and stress control are all great ways to keep your memory healthy and your brain smart. Yes, absolutely. So you could be like my 102-year-old grandmother and talk to me about weed. Yes, <laughs> that's my goal. Talk to my grandchildren about weed. <laughs> so. You'll be like, I remember in 2020 when it wasn't legal in half the state. I uh, know. Well, it's not legal in our state, you know, but it is in California. So. But we legalized it in 2016, so it hasn't been legal that long. That's true. Yeah. That's I mean, true. we had medicinal marijuana, yeah, but not, yeah, not yeah. recreational. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's like, it's just <laughs> interesting. It and is. I do actually have a uh, upcoming episode on, I forget exactly the, it's on CBD and seniors, mm, okay. but the guy is, he just turned 80 and he's been a, um, like a legalization advocate for mm -hmm. like my whole entire adult life or you know, <laughs> wow. most of my life, more than my adult life. So that was a really interesting conversation Ooh, too. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So really need to listen to, yeah. yeah. I can't remember when he's coming out. I have to look at the list. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I know how that is. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been super fun and I hope that we've not straight off topic too much and talking about how to keep our brains healthy because it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely important as we age and as we live through insanity, even when this is all over and we're like, wow, we managed to get through 2020. Oh my gosh. You know, there's going to be challenges all the time with life. You know, mm -hmm. your brother's got MS, you know, I'm assuming at some point my grandmother will no longer be with us. We're going to move again. That's always stressful. Oh, wow. So, you know, there's always wow. things in life that we just have to learn how to roll with and right right and if my grandmother can accept not being able to see or take care of herself in a happy positive way right yeah that's my goal <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely yes well this has been thank the now now my tongue doesn't want to work this has been wonderful <laughs> Well, thank you so much. So I'm thank glad you. we get to do a, an episode on your podcast and one on mine. And I hope everybody checks out both. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.